Hello everybody and welcome to my beginner's guide for Captain of Industry. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to wrap up everything you need to know to enjoy this fine game. As usual, there are timestamps in the description box, so if you're looking for a certain topic, go check them out. I hope you'll find your answer there. If not, feel free to leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. First things first, let's give you a quick summary about the game. Captain of Industry is a mixture between a city builder game, a factory building game and it has some survival vibes splashed into it. The story is that you're crash landing on a remote island with your ship, a couple of people, and you're setting yourself up in a, a city here and you launch a rocket into space at the end. Why? Because that's what factory games do. Jokes aside, this is an early access version. I don't know where the devs will go in the later stages of the development phase, but for now you have a very solid development um, procedure to go through from basics to rocket launch and there's a lot of technology there i'm going to show you later and so far i can wholeheartedly recommend this it's a bit clunky on the edges because early access you know but that's what my video is good for after this one you'll hopefully understand how to enjoy this game now let's get started and go over the user interface real quick up here we have the city metrics. You see how many people you have here. 90 pops out of 150. So this is uh, based of the city um, settlement parts that you got. How long your food will last. How many workers you got. How much unity you got. Unity is a resource that you can use for various amounts. I'm going to explain that later in a little bit more in detail. And the health rating. If the health rating is too low, your people won't have kids they'll eventually even die because it's too unhealthy to live here and you also see here how long it takes for a car to do his job and how long they will they'll wait in queue for the next job to unlock pretty nice metric to keep your logistics balanced up here you see how many vehicles are out of how many we got so nine out of 50 what our ship is doing right now it's docked because it's damaged later down the road you can use it for exploration as well and you'll see what kind of tech you're researching up here as well then over here we got the time you know there's not much to explain you can fasten up you can slow down you get the idea this here is the inventory of our city all manner of different goods, how many we got of them, and the maintenance rating. Maintenance is how worn down and uh, shoddy your stuff is, and there's a maintenance center fixing these things up. Now, down here we have our building menu. You click these icons and there's different categories, and if you're looking for something in specific, if you know what you're looking for, you can also use the search bar. You also have some nifty little tools over there, which I'll be explaining in the course of the game, because right now I think it'll be more overwhelming than useful. Now, that's pretty much all we need to know. I merely haven't uh, clicked the cookbook yet. That's where you can see all the recipes available, but if you're new to the game, this will be more overwhelming than anything else. I just wanted to show you that it's there. Now, let's get started with the actual game. So we have all these things. Our job is to set up a wonderful and working city here with lots of industry. So we haven't, we, we don't have the necessary uh, goods for that. Our shipyard features some items that we can use. There are some ruins which we can salvage, but beyond that, there's really not much we can work with. So the first thing you ought to do is build yourself a research lab or ideally even two. If you see there, a research lab costs you a bit of unity, that's what uh, Icon there tries to tell you, a bit of workers, four of them, and a bit of construction parts, that's the uh, icon here for these. So we got all these, so let's build two of them, so we get our research a bit more quicker done, fast the game, uh, put the game on fast, and as you see here, the trucks are immediately doing their job. When you click them, they picked up the construction parts, they even picked up accordingly, and there's their fuel, and you see, they did their jobs. Building is done very quickly, and there's really not much I need to explain about that. Now, we can now go for research. 
this is the entire tech tree and as i said it is pretty it's pretty much for a uh, early access version so the first thing we're going to research here is basic farming because we we ought to put food on the table you also start with all these other technologies everything gray with a little check mark is researched everything with a lock icon is not accessible right now because you need to unlock the predecessors and everything with the green tag like this one is researchable those little numbers here are ought to give you an indicator about how hard it is to research that tech and um, yeah that's pretty much all you need to know about research so one thing we're going to do in between here is we're going to provide our city some waste collection because we only have a food market you always have that automatically the food market spreads food in your city and the waste collector collects like the name implies waste for your citizens so this way we'll gain a little bit more of that sweet sweet unity so let's give our let's give you a little bit of a uh, tutorial about city management so so the basics so when you tune in on the settlement you see the settlement has certain needs in terms of food and it also has certain needs in terms of all the other stuff as you see here food plays a role electricity water household goods the more you have of these the more unity will be produced and the more unity you got the more fun stuff you can do and over here you also see health influences population growth health has a base rating and you also see we're investing a part of our unity now into the research labs there and that's pretty much all you need to know about that it's pretty self-explanatory the waste collection here as you see collects waste but that doesn't help us here too much either we're going to need to designate a spot where we can get rid of that waste so let's talk about dumping dumping is giving your uh, cars a area where they can toss junk to so we don't want to have our trash in the vicinity of the city that's just not good you know health issues so let's deposit that somewhere safe as you see here now you have all these different tools and pressing r allows you to rotate that thing and you already might notice it's shaped like a ramp here and if you post down with a left click if you connect it you see the cursor tries to make to continue the ramp immediately you put it down like that it adds in here so there we go and this would now continue as long as you do it well we don't want that so right clicking removes these we're going to make a smaller ramp and now press f to make it flat press f yet again to get back into uh, into ramp mode and e and q allow you to heighten things so the the thing is quite easy Everything needs to be connected in a way that it's accessible. And now here, our trucks will first fill up the ramp here, then they'll fill up the ramp there, and they'll start un unloading stuff then there. So as soon as we have enough junk now, they'll use this area we have designated here to get rid of the junk. So we have finished the research of the food production. So as soon as there's 20 waste in this thing, they're going to transport it away now let's talk about food my friends so food we've unlocked the farm and to know where to place down your farm we're going to go down into the layers tool and uh, before we do so let's put on a bit of a technology here i want vehicles and mining thank you and you can also put things into the queue we're going to put on vehicles and mining next and then construction and then the trading dock and after that power and maintenance it's pretty useful to queue these things up in my humble opinion okay so food go down here into the layers menu either by clicking this or pressing l and we now are interested in groundwater groundwater provides your crops the water they need without you needing to water them so try to make to build up your farms somewhere along the groundwater table pretty important thing so you place down these here there and pretty much that's all that needs to happen 
The farm needs 10 workers and a bit of construction parts yet again, so you see we'll have to provide there as well. And meanwhile, I feel like we want to have yet another research lab. If you deconstruct things via the demolishing tool here, you get a part of the resources back. And I'm speeding up research here for the sake of the tutorial. In your real run, you wouldn't need to have that many labs, but at the end of the day, these labs only cost you a bit of unity and a couple of workers, and you can always shut them down by pressing here the pause button. You'll get all the workers back if you do so. Now, the farm will now tell you that it has no water. Don't be alarmed. That's no problem. There's going to be, it's, they're going to be watered via rain. And as you see here, water is now being allocated as well. That's because there's soil water present. It just takes a couple of days until it kicks in. But the TLDR there is, your farm, as long as it is standing on a groundwater thingy, will work out fine. I haven't tried out yet if a potato farm can exist of rainwater alone, but this is a foolproof method of allocating the food for your city. As soon as this thing is running, keep an eye out on your potato count. If you are angsty, just press C, copy that thing, and pl plot down a second potato farm. If you think you're not, that's not going to last. Every building here can be always just set on pause. So if you have a feeling you have overbuilt a bit, that's a nice way of getting the job done instead. Now, that's food. Let's talk about some other things in between we have we haven't uh, researched the construction tech yet so we're gonna wait for that we have now vehicles and mining unlocked but i want to talk about construction first this technology now will unlock the assembly at the assembly we can do various wonderful things the most important thing at the early stage of the game is the construction parts because you know you've already noticed Practically all the buildings are existing out of construction parts, so we want that assembly going. For that regard, we're going to need iron, wood, and concrete slabs. So this is a bit problematic because, okay, wood, we got lots of trees there. To harvest trees, you really only need to put down the tree harvesting designation, like that. Draw a nice rectangle over these trees that you want to get rid of, and then your tree chopping tree harvester you happen to start with one will go over there and do his job but what you got to do there is you have to assign a truck to him because this thing here will cut the trees but before you click there and assign a truck to him there's going to be no method for this little thingy here to transport the trees away so that's the first part of our uh, of our problem we got wood so we also unlocked the assembler so let's build that thing so i don't know under which rider it is so i just type in assembly that's also a method so let's set up the assembly here okay we've solved the issue with wood what about iron plates so that's the next thing we're needing to do so we find metallurgy and smelting so we can create iron out of iron ore or out of metal slag. So at the beginning of the game, you need to use the abandoned communications station because it has iron scrap, concrete slabs, and electronics. The concrete slabs, we are going to need them for the construction parts, and the iron scrap, we're going to create ourselves now some neat and nice iron plates out of that. Okay, so I've given the order to recycle that thing. Now we'll have to put up the actual smelting thing. So the blast furnace picks up metal slag and coal and puts that, transforms that further. We don't have coal yet. Coal is being produced by making wood or putting wood into this machine and transforming it into coal. You can also mine coal, but we're not going to do that as of yet. So we're going to place down the coal maker here. And as usual, your next free machine will just grab the next materials and get that done. You can also quick deliver the materials via Unity. That's a way of you spending Unity. Or you can prioritize these buildings. So now there's a coal maker. 
The coal maker is now, as you see here, making coal. The coal maker needs a transport to output exhaust, so that's another thing. The coal maker does produce coal and exhaust. So you find the... Where is it again? Yeah, here, waste management. The smokestack needs to go right there. You see that? And if you see that green thingy here, you've placed it correctly. The smokestack is necessary to make things happen. And also, keep an eye out here. There's the entrance, there's the exit. As soon as you have conveyor belts unlocked, this is how these machines work. But before you have conveyor belts, everything can be done via cars. So we got now access to coal. Let's continue. We're going to produce the blast furnace now. Let's see. Yeah. And as you see here, the blast furnace is producing molten iron and also some exhaust. So we're going to need to put up a smoke stack here as well. We can already plan that directly. And then we're going to need the metal caster who's going to receive that molten iron and transform it into metal plates. So as you see here, there are two things that want to be connected. So there's the output of molten iron and there's the input of molten iron. We're heading over to the transport section and, and pick up the molten channel and left click there until you see those green thingies light up again and then just left click there. And that's how you connect these things. So we have to select a recipe now. We're going to select the iron scrap coal recipe, but you can also just configure that thing to accept both recipes, no biggie. So that's one thing how we can do it. So now we're producing our own metal plates. Now all that's left to do is to set up the recipe we want the assembly to do for us. And now all our other uh, cars will do the stuff automatically because as long as truck import and truck export are set on automatics, they're just going to distribute the jobs accordingly. And as you see here, all the machines are set up like that. And this is how you produce things in general in this game. That's how it works with all the other um, procedures, whether it let it be concrete or diesel or whatever. So to produce diesel, you'll need to put up an oil pump, which brings up the oil. And then you put that oil into the distiller and then you put that into the fluid storage and so on and so forth. The, the basics are always the same. Just keep in mind, everything which is fluid needs to be transported via a pipe or whatever thing is necessary. Fluids cannot be transported by trucks. Everything else can be transported by trucks. There is one exception, which, one exception of a fluid which can be transported by trucks, and that's diesel, because that's fuel. But apart from that, stuff like molten iron and, uh, and so on, you need to pipe that. You can also see what kind of products are supported by the pipes by just hovering over that. Now, let's talk about mining. So, we're not going to have iron scrap here forever to turn into metal bars. So, we're going to need some alternative to that. Let's use that layer uh, menu again. And as you see here, we're now on groundwater. We want iron ore, and there's lots of iron ore here. You can also see the iron ore already here on the map. Pretty, pretty hard to miss it, isn't it? So we're going to need one thing first before we can do any mining. And that's put up a mine control tower. The mine control tower will be the, the area where the mine will be will be um, located at. So we're going to put that up. And another thing that we're going to need is a vehicles depot now, because the excavator that we're needing for the job, we don't have that yet. So we are going to need to build ourselves an excavator. So all these jobs will be done in no time, don't you worry. And one thing that I missed to mention there there's also a unit storage where you can just store certain goods. So you built that thing and we're going to configure that in a way that's going to store some stuff for us. 
how about some construction parts? Everything else you see here right now is being stored at the shipyard. But the shipyard is no permanent storage, so don't rely too much on that. So this one here, we're going to assign a product to that one, and we're going to say construction parts. So all the construction parts that are being produced now at the assembly are being stored there. This way we can store more. Now, we got the mining, the mine control tower, and we this is wrong. The area, we edit that, the area of the mine control tower, we want that somewhere here. We want that over the mining area, and we want that over other areas. Well, I don't like that too much. Let's draw that once more. Yeah, this is a good one. Okay, so we assign a truck to that. And we're going to build ourselves an excavator. You see here the excavator needs vehicle parts, diesel, and some iron plates. Luckily, we got all these items. And then we're going to uh, designate the excavator as soon as it's there. So, to mine stuff. you got to get yourselves into a certain, into a pretty similar um, menu like with the dumping. But the other way around. With the mining, you want to tell the game where you want to mine. So we're going to say, let's go into the ramp menu yet again, and let's start mining here. We set up the first one, and if you connect the next one, you see that it starts to build a downward, a downward um, slope for us. Pressing F yet again, and we can designate to level the field here yet again, and it's pretty similar to the dumping spot, just the other way around. Now you see here, that's what we're trying. We're trying now to build a ramp down there and elevate and, and level the field there as well. You can, of course, just press F for another ramp. Do that wherever you want. Just uh, keep in mind that the starting point is probably the most finicky and important thing. And keep in mind that sometimes your plans just don't work out as intended. And here you see, Mining designations outside of mining tower areas. This is not possible. You need to do your mining inside the mining tower area. And if you ever struggle with this mining thing, turn it off and on. And try to rotate that thing into the direction where you want to mine. And then go down there. I gotta admit, it took me a while a bit to uh, get behind that as well, but it's all about making a ramp into either the direction across you want, or above you, uh, or, or, yeah, you get the idea, and then just uh, try if it works or not. You can always um, delete your orders and replace them, but so far I have managed to dig out everything with that. The whole mining minigame is pretty interesting to say the least and you really can do a lot of construction uh, things there so we assign a excavator now there and what's happening now is if you don't designate any dumping area inside the control zone here the excavator will only work to fulfill certain needs. So for example, let's turn up the iron scrap thingy here to give you a good impression about what I'm talking. So what will happen now is this thing is going to mine that. Truck comes to pick up the iron ore. And now that truck will get on over to this place here and deliver the ore. The other uh, method you could apply is you could allow them to put up a dump in here. You can also configure the dump. So you can also allow this to just dump iron ore here. So you could extract that stuff for later use or you can configure that to your own liking. So that's the basics about mining. There's plenty of things you can mine Later down the road, for example, you will be mining limestone, which is a different task here. So you have here a big mountain to uh, to uh, shovel down. You have coal over here where you can also dig out. So mining is a pre pretty big and fun part of the game. Enjoy yourself with it. You'll get behind the 
the dumping and binding menu the alongside of the uh, of the gaming. I hope you guys. I hope I was able to explain it in a way that it was understandable. Okay, so I want to talk about vehicles and fuel for a moment here. So right now our vehicles are going to pick up their fuel. You see here there's their tank. Whenever they are empty, they're going on over to the shipyard and pick their pick up their new diesel. And the other problem you have there is you're got you're extremely limited in the amount of diesel you got right now. So researching the basic diesel technology and producing the fuel by yourself is very very important otherwise you will you will have some trouble so let's build ourselves a trading dock as well and beyond that you can build all of your vehicles here most vehicles are automatically configured and they they do their job as they uh as they should automatically but there's one thing and that's important to note that's maintenance so i i put maintenance into the uh, vehicles part because they are the most maintenance heavy thing and the maintenance depot transforms electric parts and electronics into maintenance as you see here we're at zero percent maintenance and at that point stuff will eventually regularly break down for a while before it is usable again you need to put up mechanical parts for the maintenance center and you need to put up electronics for the maintenance center and you see here electronics are made out of rubber and copper luckily you start up with a nice stockpile of rubber and copper but you already might notice that's the next thing you need to work around and you also need power for this thing so you're going to need a small diesel generator for that but you already might have noticed that as well. <laughs> Diesel generator, you need that fuel. Fuel production is one of the most important early game things that you ought to do. And after that, fuel production, you'll also need to bring up the concrete production. So these are the two big, uh, bigger things. So, you should now understand enough about how the game works to get the ball rolling for yourself. You got to research next the concrete production stuff and there's synthetic rubber there's copper refining so copper needs to be mined as well and refined there and there's lots of other cool things that you can do but they all revolve around the same mechanics the only thing that i can't stress out enough is at the really early stages of the game there is a bit of a rush getting towards copper refinement synthetic rubber basic diesel and the other technologies that I've showed here to to get the basic needs of your of your settlement rolling that's being the parts for construction parts because if you run out of construction parts you're you're just unable to build anything and you need the parts for electronics because electronics grow more and more important very quickly as well but there's luckily a couple of things you can make and do to make your th your life easier and that's going to be the last parts of this video so we're right now building a trading dock and a trading dock allows you to trade with your with a village so the villages in the vicinity here will trade some materials with you so for example via some unity you can use wood to trade into concrete slab you can trade construction parts into copper. You can trade construction parts into rubber. I wouldn't recommend that, but if you're desperate, you could go for these. But the most um, interesting trades are wood for concrete. But be careful with that, because, you know, your wood so stockpiles are also not in this. But, I mean, there's a lot of that. But if you focus these productions, it wouldn't be too much of a problem. So I want to talk about Unity here a little bit more now too. So you can use Unity to boost buildings. You can use Unity to immediately deliver materials to building sites. And there's various uses, uses for Unity. But you can also use it just as an upkeep resource for your research labs. I personally would recommend you if you don't use Unity too much for all its active uses 
pump out as many research labs as you want to in the early game stage to get those uh, researches done as quick as possible. Beyond that, it's up to you. There's a huge tech tree behind that and there's really a lot of stuff to go for and therefore I don't need to explain more. I hope you guys are now not confused about it anymore and able to just uh, plow yourself through this, uh, through this game. Of course I've skipped many things like the statistics and uh, all many other beautiful things but those basics will bring you through the game. So feel free to drop me your comments down below, leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed and of course consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up from my side and I'd be absolutely grateful to have you. Apart from that, in the description box you'll not only find the timestamps I mentioned, but also my Discord channel where you can hang out for a chat, my Twitch channel where I do stream quite regularly, and last but not least my Patreon and other support channels. And this is a free project after all, and I can use all the support it can get. So if you're still watching, if you're still listening, I'm extremely grateful you already did that. If you might want to check out those links, it'll be even greater, but don't you mind if you don't. Have a wonderful time and have fun gaming. See you soon.